some of my findings. Here's a table that uh, I want you all to memorize, of course. Uh, very important data here. <laughs> but what it means in general is the findings for my adult students, they uh, demonstrated or reflected an overall moderate to high degree of spiritual vitality. So this is kind of a snapshot. Uh, they're looking good spiritually on uh, a uh, Likert scale of 1 to 6. But one thing I could point out here, I can get my uh, little uh, laser to work. If you notice, these two lower mean scores for anxious and, and distant attached. I'll go over here too on my right side. <laughs> anxious attached. These, are, these two subscales are negatively oriented. So you want your mean scores to be low there. These are negative mm. aspects of spirituality. Mm -hmm. Anxiety, distance, mm -hmm. detachment. You don't want to be scoring high in that uh, good <laughs> relational <laughs> aspect of your life. So those are low and that's good. <laughs> And that contributes to this finding of the high degree of spiritual vitality. And I did find, thank God after all that work, I did find there were differences <laughs> between the two groups, actual significant <laughs> statistical differences between the adults and the, and the traditional age students and within my adult group, which I found were important for higher ed. Uh, also, I mentioned earlier the 19 program impact items. I've selected six of them here, and uh, what these represent, their findings, you can interpret these as representing a slight to moderately positive impact on adult student spiritual development while in college. So as an administrator, you can look at this and say, okay, according to these findings, these aspects of our program are having, could be having some influence on uh, mm -hmm. the spiritual growth of our students. Um, and this to point some of them out. A traumatic event having been experienced within the last three months. Relationships with uh, staff and administration. I appreciated what Cynthia was saying that the family, that extended family that, that happens in higher ed, also seems to happen within the non traditional program. Uh, relationships with other students, uh, faculty, and cultural diversity and cultural diversity issues, which is interesting, and I'll tell you why I think it's interesting in a minute. Um, so, the significance of the findings uh, I like to think that I've started a kind of a uh, baseline norms. I'd love to see uh, the CCCU continue to use this instrument and develop, uh, develop a, a benchmark database that other institutions can assess the spirituality of their students and use it as a comparison to see, see areas where they're, str they're strong and areas where they could, could improve. And uh, in general, these data give us some better understanding of adult student spirituality, which was lacking, as I pointed out earlier. And it addresses the overall lack of national assessment data that's specific to this group of students. And I'd like to suggest, too, from now on, that uh, since there are so many <laughs> distinctions between these two groups, uh, and not a lot of distinctions in learning and, and so on, but now we, we're seeing that there's distinctions in spirituality, that we assess these two groups separately uh, and, and when we look at how well we're doing as an institution. So just in general, as far as discussion goes, uh, it, it seems apparent that adult students perceive their spirituality differently than traditional age students, and these findings do suggest that perhaps at least this group of students are, have a, a greater spiritual vitality than the traditional age students. Not that we're competing, but it's interesting nonetheless. Um, also, this is kind of unclear, these findings, but it's going to bear further looking into is that adult students, according to these findings, participate sometimes to a greater extent in their spiritual growth while in school and sometimes to a lesser extent. But there were some unclear aspects of these findings and I really want to look at it a little more in depth. Implications for higher ed, like I mentioned earlier, I would like to see these two groups assessed separately uh, because as I mentioned those previous studies, everybody seems to be all grouped into one lump and as we can see there are different uh, different uh, character and so I'd like to see them assessed differently but inferences we can draw that would be important for um, academia are that program design can impact spiritual transformation I'd like to suggest that anyway uh, that the cohort model which is characteristic of a non-traditional or degree completion program that builds that relationship over a you know, one and a half to two to three year period having the same group of students, uh, these findings suggest that that really contributes to spiritual growth. Even the admissions process, if you can imagine, if something is mm -hmm. as uh, mundane as that, the, the, the admissions process really can have an impact on spirituality, so we need to include that in our uh, assessing how well we're doing in impacting spirituality. Curriculum design and pedagogy can impact spiritual transformation, the collaborative learning method, which is also characteristic. Mm -hmm degree completion uh, models and critical reflection. 
exposure to cultural diversity, which is pretty, uh, it's pretty understandable until I point this one thing out. And it's the limitations in my study. I noticed Cynthia kind of buzzed by these, but I'm going to point them out. <laughs> um, the convenience sampling method is, uh, is, of course, not as powerful as something in a random uh, nature. But my lack of diversity in my population, 86% white. But what I found interesting was that they said that uh, cultural diversity and exposure to cultural diversity impacted their spiritual growth. So I just found that interesting, and I liked it. I might even consider doing a focus group. To find out no, no, <laughs> don't say it. Don't do it. Yeah, my sample was 78% female, so thank you, women. Uh, but I would like to see a better distribution uh, of that. And then the program impact items. There are 19 of them in the survey as it is now. Uh, they're primarily designed for traditional age students and traditional programs. So I'd like to redesign. In fact, uh, Dr. Hall is talking to me about actually helping design uh, an adult version of this uh, tool that be more specific to the non-traditional student. I'm very excited about that. Future research. I'd like to do some research on gender differences because some of the findings uh, were that uh, 11 of the 22 scales, uh, uh, the women uh, showed uh, significantly higher spirituality than the men. The 11 other scales, there were no differences. I'd like to see if there are statistical correlations between the impact items and their spirituality. That would just underscore that notion that our program actually has an influence on spirituality. And of course, I'd like to see a longitudinal study because I really don't know what these students' spirituality was when they came into their program. So I'd like to eventually get that, get the data coming in and get it going out. Much more power. So thank you if you have any questions. Questions of adult learners different, but is there any um, plan to? Well, let me rephrase it. Did you see the instrument as having all 187 questions necessary? I don't know if I'm qualified to answer that, but, but the process he used, the the the, the factor analysis and reducing uh, the items down, um, I have confidence in. Mm -hmm. um, so huge, and, and yeah, I'm wondering is. if the... 45 well, minutes it took to take the test. Yeah, so that might influence the smaller um, response rate. Oh, it did. I'm confident in that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to design an instrument for the adult learners that captures the most essential elements? That would be nice. That's not my thinking, though, because I, I feel like I'm touching his baby. I'm more concerned about the uh, program impact items and the demographics, because they're very different. Because as I started thinking about it, my email, you know, would you please take this 45-minute survey, you know, and kudos to those people who did take it. So it really says a lot about that person, and uh, I'd love to see it more as a part of a program, uh, that, that incoming and outgoing is more and more required of the students. I think we get a little different picture. Uh, we only were taking two, so catch Chris over lunch. I'm going to say <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris.